Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Got a great one for you guys today, but first, got to let you know that we have a Patreon, and depending on your level of support, you're getting all of these videos uh, before anybody else, completely mitigating the kayfabe effect, and uh, you might have access to a live stream watching us record this stuff and stammer uh, in in real time. Uh, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make uh, on the stands right now. I have two trade paperbacks of Red Room out there in the wild, but we're soliciting uh, Red Room Crypto Killers issue one and two to your shop right now. Please put in your uh, pre-orders for that. Uh, four volumes of of Hip Hop Family Tree are out there in the wild. It's the 10 year anniversary of that series. Three volumes X Men Grand Design and WYSIWYG. Jim has out. Right now uh, is Hulk Grand Design at, at your local comic shop. It has that beautiful treasury edition. You're not going to miss it. You pop into your comic shop, you're going to see a green eyeball from 50 paces. Uh, he has Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. Street Angel Princess of Poverty is forthcoming. And uh, Plain Janes is out there in the wild. Uh, so now that we're done paying the bills, let's take a look at a real treat for your eyeballs. It's a weird book, man. A hardcover book, uh, about 100 or so pages of uh, Katsuhiro Otomo play, playing uh, the standards, playing the canon. He's he's uh, doing Don Quixote. He's doing Hansel. I think it's called Hansel and Gretel. I don't know what that says. But like I always remembered seeing, you know, his bibliography online. And like Hansel and Gretel was like one of those pieces of the, the bibliography. And that is this book right here. It's very frustrating when you think of, you know, we've, we've looked at some of his stuff that has not been published in English. Yeah. And like this is a no-brainer. You know, yes. and it's beautiful from the get go. Feels very European. It does. And, and doing kind of a, a quick look through before we started this video, there's some stuff that feels like a conversation with Mobius. Totally, man. Yeah, you see the clean line and all that kind of thing. Now, uh, we do not know Japanese, so those of you who do know Japanese, you're able to tell what each and every one of these things are. But uh, I think a fun game to play, Jimmy, will be uh, let's go through a couple of pages of these strip, try to figure out what the hell it is. Uh, off the bat, I'm like, is that Gulliver, perhaps? Interesting. You're he much better at this game already than me, Ed. <laughs> I feel like Fable's uh, not going to be my strength. But, boy, you just marvel at his drawing. Yeah, absolutely. Comes from various points in his career. This is a weird book, too, because you see it's put out by CBS, Sony, in a collaboration. And uh, every story, there will be, like, a loose-leaf promotional piece for, so, like, a soundtrack or something. But some of these stories are from the 70s. Probably most are from the 70s. You could tell this is a little more raw. Yeah, it's interesting to see him using a little more black yeah. than, I, than I associate with him. And, and not just black, but simplifying certain things. Um, the, nights, the night scenes are really, really nice. I love that it's not a full moon that he's using. But the reproduction on this edition is fantastic, and it's oversized. This is like a European album-sized book. Yeah. And the reproductions are just crisp and beautiful. I'm seeing the uh, breadcrumbs, so this must be the Hansel and Gretel part of uh, our I story. Bet you that would make sense. Wearing Andre the Giant's outfit uh -huh. and get up right there. That's right. The composition is all there. Oh man, but maybe it's a mashup because now there's almost like a uh, Humpty Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty sort of character. Yeah, that would be uh, that'd be. Well, I guess that would be fables. From <laughs> I was gonna design. say mashing up all of these stories. Look at the design work here with like its butt cheeks <laughs> in kind of a doggy stylish position. <laughs> That's very bizarre. But it's not really calling attention to the butt cheeks. That's either an accident or, yeah, I don't know. Man, I wish I knew like the years too. Like, is he working? You think he's working by himself on these? Right. You know, pre assistance or anything. That's always the the fascinating thing about the the cartoonist's career. We got a little bit of it on the record with Felipe Smith, where there is a pain period at the start of your career where you cannot afford assistance, and you're expected to meet some very rigorous deadlines, uh, and you got to do that for about six months before you could start start affording people to help. Yeah, and you can see with these, there's very minimal screens used. There's a couple here and there, but for the most part, it's just on the page, which maybe it's faster drawing on the page than trying to make screens work. There's the butt <laughs> tree again. Yeah, quite an update, I think, of this story. Also, there's ex what look like experiments. Like, there's some hatching that I feel like is going to fall away. You know, this kind of screen door hatching is something I don't associate with Otomo. Right. Um, but saw it a few times in that story. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood off of page one. I'm seeing a. That's a. I'm seeing that's maybe a, a grandma. Uh, seeing seeing context a context clues. Big bad wolf. <laughs> Boy, that wolf is scary. <laughs> it's totally dressed up now in grandma's hat. <laughs> <laughs> what a subject matter to play with. 
You know, whenever uh, imagining like having to do like, I don't know, a Legend of Zelda story or something, or even like Cerebus, like where do you find the reference for that kind of shit? There's like weird thicket thatched roofs and all that stuff. Yeah, Hellboy would have that similar, uh, same deal. How you guys putting together your morgue. Yeah. That, that, coy- that like, wily Coyote looking big bad wolf is amazing. It is, man. But now we're seeing three little pigs territory. So I guess these are maybe just like mashup strips. Yeah, I don't know. Boy, They're... you sure see the wolf there uh, huffing and puffing. Yeah. <laughs> is this Jack and the Beanstalk? How about me pulling one? Keep score at home. I think I got one, maybe. Right, that's a big ass bean. That is a big ass bean. And that's the little ass nut <laughs> sack of nuts. He trade his pants for that as well. <laughs> there is a lot of body humor here. Look at this sequence. <laughs> like this this tree falls on this person's head, pushing the axe through. <laughs> wow. What a virtuoso drawer though. I know, man. Like Drawing these frogs at different angles and, and giving them personality. And below water. Yeah, he's showing off what he could do with zips there, huh? Yeah. But then it's also one of those things where it's always fascinating, like what they choose to use hatching on. You know, you could have done some stuff with tones there. That looks almost Mobius like. You know, except it kind of gets away from him a little bit. It's incredible how much he can put into a, a panel and it doesn't feel busy. It doesn't feel like over rendered. Beautifully designed. Like there's not one boring millimeter of these pages. No, and if you want to do like uh controlling your, your reader's eyes, look at that black how it pulls you right into that panel. So we got these like unlit ma- or these like spent matches, but then he's got like uh he he becomes a match. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that that fairy tale. <laughs> He's, it's, it's amazing to go from this level of detail and um, amount of figures and everything to then pages where it's like one solitary figure. Yeah. And now we're into, I guess, Goldilocks, right? Is that porridge? You got me. Nah, oh, geez. Now, now Otomo gets canceled. Yeah, this one's on you for showing it off, Ed. Yeah, right. Through the Looking Glass, little Alice in Wonderland gimmick. That's an interesting tree. So beautiful. Very delicate hand. And definitely... I wonder what kind of reference is used on it on something like that. Yeah. Because tree, like all this stuff that you think is not hard to draw, it's really hard to make a tree look, I mean, like that. Totally. This is great. And this is some of the stuff that I feel like there's a Mobius European kind of... Uh, connection there you know like some of the ornate background details yeah pretty psychedelic it's a great contrast to go from these trees that are gorgeous but very organic to then like these kinds of grid patterns and straight lines wow that's awesome we're through the looking glass now wow (laughs) i'm so impressed with this stuff love this little shades of jim woodring where like you're really getting into surreal landscapes i felt that with the frogs but then doing like the grids as part of your story and background to actually part of the reading experience. Is that the Mad Hatter? There's your Cheshire cat. Yeah, yeah. And it's everything. It's it's the card soldiers. It's uh, your Humpty Dumpty. I feel a little Nemo and Slumberland moments with some of this stuff too. We know what this one is. The Wizard of Oz gimmick. It's a beautiful splash page. And this is a wild one. Got little Dorothy here. You know, this is well before Lost Girls with between uh, Alan Moore and Linda Gebby. Because she, like, uh, you know, she shows her panties. And then uh, some kind of balloon jumps up and hits a scarecrow in the face. But then you see he's, <laughs> he's, he's, got, he's got heavy lumber wow. that he's carrying. Uh, Jim, but that's not all. Because you still have a tin man that's going to get to see the gimmicks. <laughs> who looks very much like a what is this gi- gigantor <laughs> so you got a scarecrow holding his boner you got a gigantor like tetsujin 28 with his joint which which by the way like akira number 28 tetsujin 28 big big uh, influence on otomo so you now got two dudes come up to the cowardly lion guy who looks like paul stanley from kiss amazing bizarre 
And he's such a rock star, right, that he doesn't even need the panty gimmicks, but maybe it looks like she's putting them down. And uh, he's got his outfit on with, like, lips at the edge. And it's the most, like, it's a, it's a, it's like a sausage dick. He would do that kind of stuff in uh, Akira, even. Like, there would be parts where he couldn't help it. Remember, we, we covered every inch of Akira on the, on the channel. And there would be just, like, a section where a guy has a big old boner and is naked running around doing something. You know, it might be an incidental piece. See, here are these, like, loose leaf gimmicks where it's like, we gotta sell, we gotta sell some shit. Some of these full page splashes, wow, they're gorgeous. Absolutely. Imagine this being amongst an anthology of other strips of yeah. different shapes and sizes. Then you get to this, like this dude is going to command your attention. The ability to do depth with these kinds of organic shapes, because you don't have your traditional perspective to put on there. Yeah. Very impressive. A lot, of, a lot of tricks to like take away from this if you're trying to draw comics. They're really trying to sell you on this... Uh... That's a big Pur one. Purple rain gimmick a couple of times. Yeah, so I don't know what this uh, fairy tale or whatever would be. Yeah, I have no idea. But I mean, same deal. Like, how do you make these compelling splash pages? Yeah. I love seeing the range, too, from, from Cinderella, right? Yeah. From, uh, from story to story, like, not repeating these kinds of compositions, you know, like, really being inventive in what he's drawing. This is fun, because, like, imagine... Uh, Otomo, like, looking at colonial, like, American kind of architecture. You know, Paul Revere-ish looking shits. Wow. Your, your manga speed, but... <laughs> so good. Service of pigs. <laughs> Midnight's coming. We're going Melville. Sweet. Looks like, huh? That's my guess. Wow, that's awesome. Um... Got to call attention, like, we've got a Moby Dick episode. Sad this isn't part of it, but some some big dudes on that episode. Will Eisner, we look Russ, at, and Kevin. Yeah, we look at three three different interpretations of Moby Dick. Uh, uh, was it Alex Nino? Alex Nino, yeah. Sienkiewicz and Will Eisner. But it's uh, this would have been a welcome addition to that video, so check that one out after you're done here. Man, I love seeing guys draw water, too. We've seen this image a couple of times on the channel. This blows my mind. Like, like this... Please tell me that he drew this two or three times the size of what we see here. Right. Such How long hand. must that take, Ed? Oh, I know. It's 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 like Edward Gorey or something. You it's know, incredible. like he's using a lot of uh, probably tech pen on this thing. So many different textures. It's so hard to make stuff work with this volume of lines. Yeah, and, and to keep still it clear. have things look like a tree or a root or separate from the ground or whatever they're next to. Yeah. And to separate depth with foreground and background and things. And I look at it like when you're flipping it, but then I look at it on the monitor. It's even more sharp on the monitor yeah. in terms of like your depth and your values and everything separating into different different layers. Man, and having to do that like throughout a story. Yeah, <sighs> choosing that. Choosing to do that. I used that. to think like drawing the woods or trees as your background. Save yourself some perspective lines. Right. I don't feel that way anymore. Do you have any idea what this story would be? I don't. It's, it's possible it could be some Japanese stuff, mm. you know? I was thinking about that one bird in the hand, two in the bush kind of thing, but that seems a little out of place for as big as some of the other stories we were dealing with in, in this uh, edition. Looking at this, does that look like, what, what could that possibly be? The X-Mansion. <laughs> and it's a full moon. Oh, it's a werewolf tale? There you go, because it was a full moon. Yeah. So happy to see the full moon used as a narrative <laughs> staple. <laughs> Yeah, wow. We call them like anthropes here on Cartoonist Cafe. We do. It's a werewolf family. Of course. How about this one, though? Rumpelstiltskin or some shits? I don't know, but I love it. Oh, Sleeping Beauty. Mm. I'm just guessing. Yeah, it makes sense. Everything's overgrown, so that that seems right. I just thought they maintained her accommodations while she was crashed out. I don't know how long she was sleeping. What the fuck, man? Dude, if this ain't stats, we're throwing this away. Okay, it is. Okay, I'm happy to report that he drew the panel once. I see some of the same uh, fuss. Well, that's good. Maybe this was a deadline driver. I'm trying to reverse engineer just a little bit, because, like, she turns. Yeah. And then, let's see, let me focus on, like, one piece. Okay, yeah, he just, like, whites out a little bit. 
Some of these marks are McFarlane-ish, ain't they? They really are, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Call. Why not? You know, you're using a, a fine uh, pen nib. Yeah. Similar tools. This is a composition that to me feels like a little bit of Mobius awareness. Yeah. And again, like I just can't say it enough. This is what I value the most. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're going to see a bunch of full page splashes, I want them to look different. Yeah. And they sure do. Doesn't it um, feel like it really lends to color? It does. Yeah. Like I can imagine something beautiful there. And this story in particular, like I see Mike Mignola-isms, you know, like it's such a pared down compositional style that you've got to make everything work. Right. There's those stores in Japan called uh, Don Quixote, and it always uh, I always wonder like what the significance of that title is for for those stores. I don't recognize any of these ads. Yeah, I don't either. Boy, that's pretty sweet. That skeleton coming up. Mm. Once again, talk about a full page. Wow. So cool, man. And and uh, it's almost the composition of that Godzilla piece that I told you about that that he did in the in the seventies. Look at that skull, dude, creating fucking whole anatomy for some weird animals and things. The skull's great. Love the bike too. Such a sucker for uh, for bikes and comics. Yeah, and the sidecar's just like a piece <laughs> of wicker. And and look at how easy it is for him to communicate that with those pen lines. Like that, like that's one to put in your pocket. Yeah, that texture. I just learned about like they have professional racing, sidecar racing. And so, like, you're basically a two-man team, but it's all about leaning and stuff, like having uh, weight in that sidecar. And dudes get hurt when they wreck, oh, as I'm you sure. can imagine. Yeah, I'm sure. Is it advantageous to have kind of a rotund uh, side partner or the opposite? The one that I heard about it from was a big dude. Uh, so if, if one's so a big know. dude, it's probably all big dudes. <laughs> yeah, like a 200-plus two, pounder is the guy that I heard it from. And uh, But it was all leans, you know what yeah. I mean? Like trying to keep that thing on the ground, <laughs> depending on which way you're going. <laughs> <laughs> How could you possibly sit in a sidecar like that? I'd be terrified. And it's wow. also like it's also being like the B the B player, you know? Like you're just you're just the weight. You're 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 on um, ballast yeah. in the race, man. But alas. What do we got here, man? Wishing upon a shining star. So, oh yeah, we. It's a. Uh, uh, this might be our bibl biblical story. All right. I was gonna say like it's almost Moses or something up in the mountains, and then you know like like coming down to lead his people. Reminded me of Diamond Head a little bit. Um, it was a, a like a volcano hike, and you know, and you look down and you can see like the base, the remnants of the base. Remind me a lot of that opening spread. <laughs> Do these guys look wise? I don't know about that. Look at a disemboweled uh, Joseph or something. I don't know what the hell we're looking at. I don't know either. This is very <laughs> strange. Because I feel like Moses ended up in a basket in the river, and I thought this could have been his story, but I don't know. It's a, that I don't remember that in any Bible stories. <laughs> King Herod killing all the babies that were born at that time, maybe. We got our uh, cult leader. Dude, I don't know. There's some, there's some strange imagery. I'm so curious now what this story is. It mustn't be a, a biblical story, right? You said it must not? Well, I don't know what else it would be. I just don't know what story this is. It's such um, well, colorful imagery. Here we go. Yeah, I guess. That's an evil-looking Jesus, man. I was going to say, is this like the passion? Right. It's a little bit timid for that, to be honest. It is. <laughs> what a closer. Wow, that's interesting. I love seeing, um, like, biblical comic stories. So cool, man. So here are your dates for the various stories. And I'll, I'll, we'll hit this with a... And you guys could probably do it at home. Uh, you, you hit it with your Google uh, translator, man, and it'll tell you what the uh, different comics are. But these are between 1978... And 1980, and it looks like it's reasonably linear, but I say that, and then I see an 81 there and a 79 there, so who the fuck knows? It's such a great book. I, I don't understand why so little of his work is in English. Like, Yeah, I mean, I mean it always comes down to just his choice. You, you don't think every single publisher wouldn't do it if he just like uh, hit, hit put his name on a contract. Uh, he just doesn't need to. And it's, it's not that different than Mobius in, in a lot of ways. You know, like so much of this stuff, you'd have an audience, but... I don't know. It's not worth their time or yeah. it doesn't meet their terms or who knows. I mean, whenever we criticize like the American comics industry, I feel like it's a reflection whenever these international artists are like, nah, 
I'm not. I'm not gonna. I don't like any of those terms enough to do it. Right. Yeah. 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 Because it's a bitch. It's a. It's. It's a hassle. You know. Just speaking from the hip hop family tree guy who has to explain s- slangs and stuff like that to a bunch of people. Like you get. You get called away from uh, the Prime Directive, no doubt, man. But uh, this is a book you could find. This man. And uh, of all the Otomos that we've been showing off. Uh, this this might be the cheapest, you know, rare, rare book that you're going to get your hands on. It might cost you about fifty here in the states or so. But uh, the King K favors are getting those first uh, because they are on the Patreon, and the King K favors are watching us uh, record this video in real time. So if you want to be a part of that crew, um, hit the Patreon in the uh, description below. But the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Jimmy, tell the people what's out there. Hulk, Grand Design, Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty. And The Plain Janes are the books of mine that are either in print or coming to print very soon. You can also join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see lots more of my artwork, comics that I'm working on, download out of print comics and zines, and more. Red Room Crypto Killers issue 1 and 2 are being solicited to your stores right this very minute. That means that they're putting in their orders and telling us how many of those things we have to print. So go ahead, do that, hit up your shop, get these comics uh, into your local store Two trade paperbacks is, exist right now, Trigger Warnings and the Antisocial Network. I'm s- serializing the new Red Room comics before they hit paper at my Patreon. Link in the description uh, at the link tree below. Uh, four volumes, Hip Hop Family Tree, celebrating the 10-year anniversary of that comic. Three volumes, X-Men Grand Design and WYSIWYG is another comic that you can see out there in the wild. I actually saw a bunch of WYSIWYGs on uh, on my Instagram stories not too long ago, so thank you for supporting the books and uh, keeping the channel going. But there are other ways to support the channel. Jimmy, tell the people what's up. Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, stickers, hats, and lots more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. I love seeing those shirts out in the wild, and it's a great way to... Uh, Keep the message going, man. Jimmy, give them the marching orders. We'll be on our way. Read more comics.